good day to you. My name is Nathan and this is Limping Through Models with me, Nathan. I have with me today an HO scale barn that I'm going to be building for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be painting, staining, and painting through the entire process. So if you want to follow along, come along and let's get started. I employ a simple philosophy when selecting a model to build. If I think to myself, that looks like it'll be fun to build, I buy it. And this barn was no exception. Now this barn is different from other structure kits that I've come across in that it doesn't put an emphasis on bracing walls and putting walls together and making sure everything is square. It actually builds like an actual building. You start out with a frame that you build up and then on top of that frame you put your walls. On top of your walls you put your windows and your trim. And on top of the whole structure you put the roof. I make an effort to gather all the components of the frame uh, first because that's what the instructions call for. Now we have four essential components of the frame uh, within this kit. The first of which are two sections that run the whole length of the barn that serve as both the fronts of all the stalls internal to the barn and also the central area where all of the other rafter pieces attach to. The second is a couple of pieces that serve as the separators for the stalls in the barn itself and also the first parts of the rafters that support the whole roof structure. After that you have some rafter pieces that only serve to support the roof structure and don't go all the way down to the floor of the model. And one last piece that supports the overall structural integrity of the model is a beam that goes across the full length of the model and sits on the underside of all the rafter pieces. It helps to keep those pieces evenly spaced so that when it comes time to put a roof piece on top of the rafters you have a nice flat surface for that roof to sit on. Considering the level of detail and thought put into this frame, you could take it as is after you've built it and place it on your layout as just a simple frame for a barn that hasn't even been built yet. It is that detailed. After cleaning up most of the edges of the pieces of the frame, it's time to now stain the overall frame. Now, what I'm going to be using for this is a product called Agit, which is from Micromark. And I've used it on a bunch of my wooden models, and it works really well. There's minimal warping uh, involved with using this product, which I think is great. And considering how I wanted this to be a much older looking barn, the color that this Agit puts out uh, really complements that idea that I have in my mind. When using the agent, it's important to note that a little bit goes a long ways. The container I'm using here I purchased a, over a year ago and I've only used about a fourth of the total liquid. Micromark sells two flavors of agent, one of which is the gray solution which is what I'm using here and then another is a brown solution. Uh, both of which are really good. Uh, they're just like any other staining solution. Uh, the more layers you put on, uh, the darker it's going to get. So you want to be careful you don't put too much on it. Additionally, these two colors are the only ones that Micromark actually sell. Uh, there is a third one that's on their site that's uh, a railroad tie brown color. But I'm not certain that's too different from the brown that is sold in tandem with the gray here. At some point I want to get my hands on some hunter line stain and build a complete model using that stain just to see how it would work out. But at $9 a pop I wanted to wait to purchase all of the stain that they had available uh, at one time just to have on hand.
one important thing to do when you're working with any stain is to make sure that you get both sides of the wood so as to minimize the warping. It may not completely eliminate it, but it will minimize it and make it a lot easier for you to work. Now that everything is stained and has had time to dry, it's time to put it all together. My glue of choice for this build is wood glue and incorporating the use of a micro brush to apply that wood glue to the structure. It gives me a lot more control than the nozzle that comes with that bottle would ever give me. And plus I can put small amounts of glue and just kind of build up till I have enough glue on the actual model to affix everything together. Now on the rafter pieces and on the long pieces that stretch the whole length of the model there's little notches that everything falls into. So for each rafter you find the associated notches on the underside of the top of the rafter and fit those into the notches on those long pieces. The instructions have you start with putting the support pieces on the front and rear of the, the barn followed by the center pieces that serve as the separation uh, between all the stalls and then finally the actual rafter only pieces that go in between all those stall separations. Finally, you have that long beam that goes on the underside of all the rafters that keeps everything evenly spaced. After I got the beam where I needed it to be, it was now time to find a creative way to hold that beam in place while it uh, cures a little bit. One thing I quickly realized as I went into this project is that I had an insufficient amount of clamps that helped me aid in putting everything together and keeping everything together while it dries. And that seems to be a running theme for this whole model because there's a lot of reliance on, you know, pieces being flat and with some of the warping that happens that's hard to do so here I am trying to wiggle my fingers into the underside where I can put pressure on the beam in the right place to uh, have it cure and now I'm going through and I'm noticing that there's some of the uh, some gaps in between the separations of the stalls and the actual front of the stalls so I had to get some glue and go in and start to uh, bring those pieces together and those weren't too bad. There was a minimal warping, so I was able to just apply some glue, hold it for a few seconds, and then it sticks and eventually cured to where they were essentially flush with each other. If there's one thing that is constant in a lot of these videos is that you need to familiarize yourself with the instructions. Well, I did. And despite that familiarization, the beam in the instructions was drawn in the wrong place so I had to take the beam remove it and then place it back in the right place and then go through that nifty creative bracing again to hold that beam in place while it dried after the beam was back in place there was some additional gaps that needed to be closed so I'm going through and taking that frame and buttoning it up against that centerpiece to make sure everything is nice and flush. It's important that the center bracing and the end bracing at the ends where they meet is flush because that's where the wall section is going to meet for the front and the back. And now I'm placing the eight gates that go inside 
the barn that comprise the entryways for all the stalls. And now I have a built and aged barn frame ready for walls, ready for the roof, ready for windows, and ready for everything else that's going to make this a fantastic barn. Now that was the end of part one of this video. I decided I was going to split this up into multiple parts, a lot shorter videos, maybe 10 at most 15 minutes, so as not to completely bore everybody, myself included. But nevertheless, that's the end of this video. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Uh, look back at some of my older videos. Um, one thing that I want to note is that there is an ice house build that is partially done. Um, I had some <laughs> mishaps with a certain two-year-old getting a hold of some of the model parts. So after uh, fixing all that up, I think I'm at a point where I can start working on it again. Uh, but that's going to be for another time in another place. Um, but until then, enjoy these barn videos for the next couple weeks. And I hope to see you back here next week on Limping Through Models with Nathan. Cheers. Cheers.